we're beginning to, to try and reopen the city. Give us your plan to try and get the city back towards some sense of normality. What is the timeline? What are your plans, sir? Good morning. Well, good morning, Ramadan Karim. Um, first of all, um, I have to say uh, to those affected, the friends and family stranded in many parts of the world, you know, our thoughts and prayers are to all of them. And I have to thank our frontline workers who are doing an amazing job to keep us all safe in the city. Um, you know, when it comes to tourism, yeah, I kind of look at it as three phases, very similar to how we are today. Phase one, you know, cu currently I think tourism is definitely on pause. And I see that uh, continuing for at least a couple of months. Uh, after that, um, in the new sort of COVID era of reopening, I see sort of a staggered approach and somewhat tentative approach across the world as different countries get things under control and people start to travel. Now, I don't really see this as yeah. open tourism. It's more sort of necessity to travel, maybe going to see their family and friends. Mm -hmm. And then sort of we'll go back to a sort of post-COVID nor normalcy where we kind of have a full reopening and more of a confidence. Hilaire, just to build on what you were saying in terms of uh, the impact the coronavirus has had on Dubai tourism, could you quantify this for us a little bit? Well, look, um, you know, as I mentioned, right now uh, in the sort of pause phase, uh, you know, we see obviously tourism arrivals uh, dropping to zero, which obviously has a massive impact. Um, and, uh, and, and as we look forward, uh, you know, we definitely see some new behavior in tourists. I mean, some of the behaviors earlier on, uh, which were there, such as booking quite late before the travel, much more independent travel and less group travel. We're also seeing uh, new behaviors, a lot, of, a lot of concern and a lot of uh, interest in getting assurance around health and hygiene across the destination. But, I, but I, what I would say is that, you know, if working under the leadership of Italian Shah Mohammed has taught us uh, one thing now through these various cycles is we have to be prepared for any eventuality. And I think Dubai has a really strong track record in our agility and ability to react quickly to these market changes. And, uh, you know, the, the one key thing about Dubai is we, we do respond collectively. So the whole ecosystem is definitely taking the necessary time and effort to get it right so we can uh, welcome the world back to Dubai when things do ease up and it does open. Halal, part of that plan to get things right and to the road to normality is going to involve the national airline. It's going to involve Emirates. Can you tell us about a timeline, uh, a capacity restore, restoration? Are we going to be back at full capacity in Emirates? Is that even likely or possible? Or what is the timeline for that reopening? Because you are inextricably linked to the ability of Emirates to deliver? Look, you're 100% correct. I mean, Emirates is our key partner and we work very closely with them. In this scenario, we're also, you know, uh, working extremely closely with all the public and private sector partners. Uh, our aim is to make sure all the aspects of the city are fully aligned and well prepared to receive tourists as soon as air travel opens up. Now, with regards to Emirates, you know, they, they have, uh, they have cancelled um, uh, there until the end of uh, June, and they're taking bookings now for the beginning of July. And we're obviously working to support them on, on the reopenings of routes by market. The thing about this uh, current scenario is it's more of a global question, as you know. Many airports internationally remain closed, and it's really about the bilateral discussions that are underway to have a coordinated approach to reopening. Uh, my priority and our priority is obviously ensuring the well-being of our guests. But at the same time, I would say July would be the time that we start to see the air open up and we start to see the, um, the Emirates network rebuild itself. Hilal, in terms of some of the measures you're taking to help the industry get through this period, can you run us through uh, measures that might be on the table or could be implemented soon? Well, look, I think, I think we're, we're very grateful on the quick response and the, and the strong program put in place by the federal and local government. Uh, with specifically to the tourism sector, they've seen support across, obviously, reductions, cancellations and deferments of fees, fines. Uh, specifically, the government fees in Dubai, such as a 50% reduction in Dubai municipality fees, also reduction on utility costs. 
One of the major issues as well, as you, you obviously know, is the, is the liquidity ac- uh, uh, access. And the central bank has come in, uh, come in quite swiftly and, and with a strong package, which, is, which has, in the tourism sector, mm. uh, trickled down through the local banks. Uh, specifically, uh, you know, penalty-free uh, loan rescheduling over a longer period of time and uh, lower interest costs, which is definitely helping the sector. Uh, you know, we're, we're obviously, as the Department of Tourism, continually holding workshops with different parts of the sector. And, and, and the key thing now, as people are moving away from thoughts about the immediacy of the health crisis, is people are starting to think about reopening. And they're starting to think about the support they need across different markets. And that's something we're definitely going to put in place. We're going to ensure that we have the necessary support packages uh, for us to really uh, get back to full capacity once the markets allow us to do that. Halal, part of your role is to plan forward. And I suppose the, the immediate question for the marketplace here is, we're facing some oversupply on the domestic and residential market. Are we now at that moment of where we have oversupply in the hotel industry and we need to begin to curb expansion and growth and building of hotels? Look, I think this is an interesting question. I mean, Dubai currently has um, 126,000 hotel rooms. Uh, you have, that's about 60, 70% of the UAE stock, uh, by, you know, if you look at the year end last year. In Dubai, and especially in the tourism sector, definitely we believe in an open market and interacting with the sector, they are not interested at all in the government controlling either supply or pricing of hotel rooms. And, but, but at the same time, I would say that the investors in hotels definitely have the expertise and the experience to make their own decisions. And we, we ensure in the Department of Tourism that they have all the information they need in terms of uh, things like the supply uh, pipeline and other things. One of the things you should be aware of is, of course, many of the uh, owners that, that have been affected uh, have um, definitely consolidated their industry across, across assets to keep key ones in operation. And this gives them the flexibility to ramp up when they need to. Another thing that you may be aware of is many of them have offered their assets to be used as quarantine facilities, which, which has definitely allowed us to keep, keep them running. Um, also, uh, you, know, yeah. you, know, if you, look at, you know, if you look at the risks coming up, you know, we're quite um, you know, concerned that, uh, that, you know, about the timeline. I think that's the main risk. You know, is it going to be July when things start to slowly open up? Is it going to be September? Sure. We just need to make sure we're ready if things come earlier than expected. Hilal, one of the key insights that our global investing audience is always looking for is anything around consumer behavior. You're a person who has the big picture. Run me through what you might be seeing in the data that suggests that when we do come back from the coronavirus, we're going to come back a bit differently. Look, I think there's, I think there's probably two parts to this, right? One part is, uh, you know, obviously we're thinking tourism. Are people interested in tourism? When you look at the data, you know, it's a little bit skewed because more people than ever are looking online at their next holiday. And this is across the world, really. You know, we're seeing these type of searches happening across the world. Now, of course, when I say it's a bit skewed, you know, people are like, like, like all of us, people are sat at home. So, you know, one of the things they, 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 they long for is their next trip. And they are spending time online. They are looking. And, of course, they're looking at Dubai. So it does show that people are still thinking about travel. The other side of things, though, is, you know, what, what, is, what are the type of trends we're going to see? And as I mentioned earlier, there are some of the things, we, some of the trends we're going to see have been happening previously. So we definitely see there's going to be a lot less group travel. There's going to be a lot more what we call FIT, which is the independent traveler making his own decision, probably okay. booking very late before travel. This definitely affects the hotel industry and affects the tourism industry and the yield. So, so there, there, there are these new challenges. Also, there is going to be costs associated with ensuring you get the assurance around you know, the health and the hygiene standards across the touch points in the ecosystem. That's something else that, that, that you know, consumers, consumers are thinking about right now. And that's going to make a big impact on the industry as well.